Hey everyone, it's Type V3, and over the past weekend, two fairly large toy-related shows just happened. The first being San Diego Comic-Con 2014, and the second being Wonder Festival Summer over in Japan. This video is going to be a quick little breakdown and overview on my thoughts on both shows, and that's really it. Of course, there was a numerous amount of announcements, and I can't cover them all, so I'm only going to touch upon the things that I really found interesting, and by that, I mean things that I'm probably going to end up buying. So, let's just get into it. If there was one theme that I could string between both shows, it's that everyone loves Batman. Everybody seemed to be doing some version of Batman, or maybe multiple versions of Batman, but the one that pretty much stole the show, not because they looked great or anything, but just because of sheer shock value, was the Play Arts Kai Tetsuya Nomura designed Batman. Now, if you don't know who that designer is, he's basically the man behind the modern Final Fantasy character designs, probably starting with Seven. Uh, as for this figure... There's some really neat, interesting aspects to it, but it's not working for me. I honestly think it looks terrible, uh, and I really have nothing else to say. I mean, personally speaking, I don't collect Play Arts Kai because I just don't find them to be that great of toys. But if you're into this thing, then hey, more power to you. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be one striking display piece. If you watched my build of the small little polybag tumbler, then you'll know what this is here. This is the ultimate collector series Batmobile tumbler, and I think it looks fantastic. $200, um, and I, I can see why. Uh, it's also the only Batman set, I believe, whose minifigures are going to be based off of the Chris Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy characters. So you're going to get that Heath Ledger, Ledger Joker as well as the Christian Bale Batman, and... Uh, I am so stoked for this. I wish I had more room in my budget to get it. I'm going to try my very best to, to pick one of these up because I think it looks phenomenal. Now, going into SDCC, the one Batman toy line on my mind was the animated series stuff by Mattel. Now, I'm not a Mattel fan, but these toys look so good. I mean, I don't know if they're going to be able to pose and play well enough, but just standing there in those, I guess, fairly boring static poses, they look great. Uh, it's just such a nostalgia kick. Uh, I knew that I was going to definitely get the Batman and the Joker and maybe some key characters, but after seeing more pictures in from the show, especially when they showed off the Harley Quinn, I knew this is something I was going to be a full line completionist on. I'm going to definitely get all of them. The biggest Batman surprise and probably my highlight for all of SDCC was Mezco's new 112th collective toy line featuring the Dark Knight Returns Batman. And basically, this is a 112th scale figure line, so basically six inches tall, but it looks like it's been designed like a 1 6th scale toy, so I guess full soft goods and super articulated high quality materials and, and accessory sets. But this toy just, I don't even know how to say it, it looks so good. It's going to come with, I believe, all the Batman gear that you'd expect, like Batarangs and the and the grapple hook. He's even going to come with um, his sniper rifle that he used in the series. I, I believe there's pictures showing off two different colors of him. One that's all black and then one that's got a little bit of the midnight blue with the boots and the, and the gloves. But yeah, this toy... I don't even know what to say. I mean, it looks like there's going to be an articulated cape with wires that run through it. It's my only concern is one price. Who knows how, how much is going to be? And I know nothing of Mezco. I don't know what their quality is like. And if they're going to enter this as and they're they're pitching this as a high end collectible. So who knows what what that means? Um, but yeah, I'm very excited for this. I'm definitely going to pick it up. Uh, and this will probably set the tone for whether I continue on with this line or not. If there's one show that's captivated me over the past couple of years, it's the CW Arrow. I just love it. And seeing this reveal at Comic-Con, this whole figure set that includes uh, Green Arrow, Deathstroke, Black Canary, Merlin, The Flash, Naked Green Arrow, and Green Arrow's suit in a case with all the dioram diorama stuff, I mean, I cannot be more excited for this. I know that there's a red already a two-pack that includes... The Green Arrow and Deathstroke out at comic shops, but I've been really just holding off because the price is too much. But seeing this, oh man, I, I am so excited. The only thing that this needs now is Oliver's entire workout gear. Uh, and by that I mean like his basement gym assembly where he can do those really impressive pull-ups. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if these toys are going to be any good, but because I'm such a fan, I'm, I'm going to want to get these. Now, over on the Marvel side of things, there's the Marvel Legends Agent Coulson. Now, this figure, I don't know, 
it looks okay, but the, the thing is, I've been really enjoying ABC's Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and I just really want a Coulson. I, in fact, I want an entire cast from that, sh- from that show. Uh, I know there's other Marvel Legends that went along with this, like Maria Hill, and they're doing another Nick Fury, and they have a really cool Thanos build-a-figure and animated series Spider-Man eating pizza, but... I'm I'm pretty I'm a pretty light Marvel Legends collector and I really only only want the characters that uh I I'm interested in and this is kind of it. So I hope this figure does well enough that we get the entire cast from Agents of Shield in Marvel Legends form too. Next up is Transformers and for their retail stuff, Transformers Generations are doing this thing called Combiner Wars where they're I guess they're just going to release uh, a pair of combiners being Superion and Menasaur. So I believe the the torso of both these combiners are going to be Voyager size, and then the limbs are all going to be deluxe class vehicles. I think it's a really cool direction that Hasbro's taking. They're really appealing to the mass collector or to the to the adult collector scene. Do these interest me? Not really. The only combiner I really want is Devastator, the all green construction combiner. But hey, I'm sure it's going to eventually get there considering Hasbro seems to be all in on this whole combiner thing. As for the super high-end Transformer fans, Hot Toys have announced their, I guess, not really 1 6th scale, more like 12-inch non-transforming Optimus Prime uh, wearing the body of Starscream. Now, I think the original concept for this came from the that, that G1 episode where the Decepticons dress up as Autobots, and I remember... Starscream did dress up as Optimus Prime, but his wings stuck out, and I think that's where this idea comes from. But Hot Toys seem to have put a spin on it and just made him some sort of murderous Optimus Prime who has killed Starscream and now is wearing his body. It's, hey, it's a thing. It's not really my sort of Transformer, because I figure Transformers that don't transform are kind of useless, especially considering since I already have a really nice transforming G1 Optimus Prime. But hey, I'm going I'm sure there is a a select group of people out there who f- who will really be into this and find it interesting. It's just not for me. Although if they painted this in Nemesis Prime colors, I would kind of be more into it. My final Comic-Con highlights were all SH figure arts related and the first one is Luigi. I mean, everyone knew this was coming, but to see it uh, on the show floor was pretty neat. It's going to come with a, a couple of th- cool things, red Koopa shell, the block, extra hands, and a display stand. Uh, and it looks nice. I mean, it looks like Luigi. My only, I guess, not really complaint, but sort of missed opportunity is, where's the Luigi death stare face? I mean, come on, Bandai has to do that one, right? Well, uh, coming along with him also is the diorama place at sea, and it's going to be a red warp pipe, a piranha plant, that enemy, I can never remember his name, and I guess a couple coins and whatnot. It looks nice. It, it looks like you're going to probably need a couple of these to build out your perfect Super Mario diorama. But yeah, I mean, I, I will continue to buy these things as long as they keep adding more unique uh, characters and items to the sets. Now, the last figure art to interest me is SH Figure Arts Vegito. Uh... I've been able to stay away from the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z line this far because, you know what, I went back and tried to watch the anime, and I couldn't stand it. It is horrible, and I just kind of don't like Dragon Ball anymore. Well, I don't like Dragon Ball Z. I mean, my dream figure art is Kid Goku with Nimbus and Power Pool, but if there was someone I wanted second, it's definitely Vegito, and now that he's here... Uh, I'm going to try my best not to buy this, but because I love this character so much, I love his arrogance... Uh, and his design, I will probably buy this. And then that will probably just push me down another rabbit hole, and then I'll probably need to go back and collect every other character. Uh, yeah, that's what this figure's done to me. Um, I have nothing more to say on it. It looks pretty darn cool. Okay, moving over into Wonderfest, Takara Tomy showed off their Mega Drive Megatron in full color now, and I gotta say, it looks pretty cool. I was on the fence until they announced this. To go along with Mega Drive Megatron, we have the PlayStation Prime, and I don't know, but the concept of transforming video game consoles is just the coolest thing ever. If there's one thing I love more than toys, it's video games, and I grew up with the PS1, uh, and I love my PlayStation 1, and uh, I don't know, the robot modes, they kind of look a little goofy because they do have to transform into consoles, but... 
I love this concept so much. I think I'm going to go all in on these two. And I hope we see more. I mean, I would love to see a Super Nintendo Starscream or anything else of, the mat- of that matter. I mean, I also love how they're using alliteration with their names. It's just, it's just clever stuff. So I- I'm-, I'm excited to see this one in full color. Okay, next is Arcadia's new project, the VFOD from Macross Zero. Now, I I love Macross, especially SDF and Frontier. I actually don't like Zero at all, but I love their Valkyrie designs, especially the the VFOD. Um, it's such a cool looking fighter. Uh, the Batroid's cool too, and I love the Gurwalk as well. Uh, this toy looks like it's gonna be very expensive as is all Macross 160th scale transforming toys. Um, but yeah, it, it, it so far, the initial product shots are looking great. I can't wait to see the Batroid in full completed form, but so far it's looking good, and it's definitely on my uh, wish list or to buy list. I, I really am excited for this one. Sentinel was also at Wonderfest, and they showed off a lot of cool things ranging from Scorponok to Black Zarak and Dan Kuga and all other announcements, but what really surprised me was their Iron Man announcements. One, they had Extremis armor, then they had some War Machine, but for me, the highlight from Sentinel was this, the Bleeding Edge Iron Man. This is my favorite Iron Man suit from the comics, and it looks gorgeous. Now, if you follow my reviews, you'll know that I have a love-hate situation with Sentinel. I love their work, or at least their philosophy. I just don't like their pricing. And I don't think the build quality really matches up with what they're asking their pricing for. And it, and when it comes to this Iron Man, I mean, it's going to retail for pretty much 20,000 yen. Now, I know if you buy it from a Japanese site, you're going to get a couple discounts to, to definitely help you offset that huge cost. But it's still ridiculous for what you're getting. I mean, that's that's one sixth scale pricing right there, and this is going to be a about a seven seven and a half inch toy. So I mean, it's going to be smaller than a Play Arts Kai, bigger than your SH figure. It's it's going to be like a little sort of one off in your collection. Um, but hey, it's going to have a lighting LED chest and all little uh, lights throughout the body. I have no doubt in my mind, articulation is going to be fantastic. But if it's like anything else I've had in Sentinel, the build quality is going to be questionable. I mean, I d- if, it, if this really is just a professionally assembled and painted model kit for $200, I don't think I can do it. But uh, it's going to be hard because, again, like I said, I love, just absolutely love Bleeding Edge Iron Man. Now, if there was a company that won Wonderfest, it would have to be Max Factory and all their Figma announcements. First things first, they're going to announce a Figma Cross Fix line. This sounds like it's going to be a set of static figures, much like how Bandai has their Figgy Warts Zero line. And I'm sure it's going to work the same way. It's going to be used to fill out extra characters that they might not be able to put in Figma form. Uh, the big highlight of this extra line is that they're going to have cross-compatible accessories with your Figmas, which is really cool, but uh, if that means we're going to get, you know, instead of accessory packs, we'll get an- another character plus some accessories, I'm I'm all for that. Now, personally, I would much rather have all my Figmas articulated, but if it means I will get a full cast from Figma, uh, that's a compromise I'm willing to make. Speaking of getting full cast of characters from Figma, they have announced that they're going to continue on with the Persona line, and we're going to get a Yu Narukami based off of his appearance in the new arena fighting game. I believe it's something Ultra Max Suplex Hold. Uh, yeah, this is cool. Uh, Yu is not my favorite character. In fact, he's probably one of my, uh, I guess, most disliked characters in all of the Persona series. I really like everyone else in Persona 4 besides him. Um... But yeah, this is neat. Whether or not where they will continue, who knows? I am all I. I have this feeling that if they're gonna do another character, it's probably gonna be Marie from Persona Four: The Golden, just because that anime is continuing on. But fingers crossed that we're gonna get more of these. Some really neat Figma prototypes were shown off. First off, on the left is the Sword Art Online Two or Gun Gale Online. She known? Is that how you say her name? I don't know. Anyways, blue-haired sniper chick, and she looks fantastic. I'm actually really surprised to see that this is almost done. It looks like it's ready for production, and uh, we might actually see this one be released in while the anime is still airing. Um, nevertheless, looks very cool. In the middle, this one kind of took me by surprise, and this is Metal Gear Solid Snake. Uh, I've been wanting a snake figure in this scale for so long that I thought I might just cave and get the 
Revel Tech One or, or the new Mini Revel Tech One. But now that this has been announced, I feel a whole lot better not having to buy a re- or settle for Revel Tech. And now we're gonna have a Figma of Solid Snake. I just hope it comes with a lot of really neat accessories, especially a, you know a cardboard box. That's probably the one accessory he needs to come with, other than other than his SOCOM. Uh, and then on the right. You all know who that is. Kill la Kills, uh, Satsuki, the the rival to Ryuko, which should be out in the next couple of weeks, and I am very excited for her. My only concern, much like Ryuko, are those straps and what they're going to be made of. One, they're going to limit her chest articulation, but the other thing is I hope they're going to be made of a durable material that will last, because even if you don't you know, move around and, and, and wear them out or, or stress the plastic... Over time, thin rubber like that tends to deteriorate, and uh, I just don't want to have those straps basically rotting away in the future. So uh, I'm hopeful, but you never know. So uh, yeah, looks like a good figure nonetheless. Of course, everybody who knows me knows that the Figma I was most excited for was Figma, quote-unquote, Marth. Uh, But of course, you all know who this is, Figma Lucina from Fire Emblem Awakening, who also just got recently announced for the Smash Brothers 4 on the Wii U and 3DS, which also excites me. And this figure, oh man, I am so pumped. She's probably one of my favorite Nintendo characters, right up there with Zero Suit Samus, who unfortunately a prototype wasn't shown off at the show, but Lucina will do, and I think she looks fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, this toy is everything I hoped it would be. The only thing that they haven't mentioned is if she's going to come with an alternate head without the mask on and her hair down so that she actually looks like Lucina. If she doesn't, then she doesn't. I mean, whatever. But because uh, I, I do like I do enjoy her Marth mask. But uh, yeah, I could not be more excited for this. I wonder what other accessories she would come with. I mean, obviously, she's going to come with the, the Falchion from her father. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I I don't know what else I would want, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just gushing over this thing. I think it looks so good. Uh, Yeah, I, I, needless to say, I have never been so excited for Figmas in a very, very long time, and, uh, I cannot wait to get my hands on this one. My final little highlight actually doesn't come from either of the shows, but was rather just released uh, in the time leading up to Comic-Con, and this is the Kotobukiya Bishoujo Jubilee. Now, I don't do statues. I kind of hate them because they don't do anything, uh, and I really don't like their pricing. I mean, the only statues I have are worth about 500 yen from those crane games, but I think this statue looks so rad and that is the exact word i wanted to use because she looks so 90s uh just with her really bright neon colors but her design is completely modern she's like neon hipster i don't know i really think this is one very cool statue um it might be one of the very few statues i actually go and pre-order because i think it's so cool um but yeah i i really like the look of this thing uh i'll keep an eye out on it and, uh, yeah, I just really want to highlight it because of how much I, I, I really enjoy the way this thing turned out. But there you go. Those were all my big highlights from both San Diego Comic-Con and Wonderfest Summer 2014. Uh, of course, there's a, probably a whole lot of stuff I missed, and, and that's just due to the nature of how many things were announced. Uh, what were you guys interested in? How did you guys feel about the shows? I would love to know what you guys are most excited for. So please leave some some messages in the comment below. I love to read those things, and I'll do my very best to respond to all of them. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I mean, this video has gone on way longer than I thought it would be, but uh, thanks for sticking through it, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.